Hey, board members, if we can get you to take your seat. Um, we're going to, let's take care of our uh, action items that came out of executive session now, and then we'll go into the, uh, yeah. Barely. I counted eight a minute. I think there's ten in here. So, okay. Board Member Belknap. Thank you, Chair. Um, from UPAC, on case number 17-1427, I make a motion to accept the UPAC recommendation. Motion and a second. The motion before the board is accept the UPAC recommendation on case number 17-1427. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Those opposed? Voting is unanimous. Thank you. In case number 17-1434, I make a motion to accept the UPAC recommendation. We have a motion and a second. The motion before the board is to accept UPAC's recommendation on case number 17-1434. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Well, the eyes. I just need, if it's just one opposed, I just need Is it one. just one? Was it Elisa? Are you the okay. opposed? I'm the opposed. Okay. I'm sure okay, you've, you've got that. I have one opposed. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. In case number 17-1451, I make a motion to accept the UPAC recommendation. Okay, the motion before the board is to accept the UPAC's recommendation on case number 17-1451. Any discussion to that motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. No. You have two. Did yeah, you? I need the middle. Okay, I need the ayes to raise your hand. Board member Gravit, Lear, Scott Hansen, Linda Hansen, Board Member Davis, Board Member Bolter, Board Member Lisa Cummins, Board Member Brittany Cummins, myself. Motion passes. I need to know the no's too. Oh, the no's. Um, Board Member Cannon, Board Member Belknap, Board Member Earl, Board Member uh, Ellis, Board Member Scott Nelson. Please continue. Thank you. Sorry. In case number 18-1490, I make a motion to accept UPAC's recommendation. We have a motion and a second. Motion before the board is to accept UPAC's recommendation on case number 18-1490. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Will the ayes raise your hand? Board Member Cannon, Board Member Gravett, Board Member Lear, Board Member Hansen, uh, um, Scott Hansen, Board Member Linda Hansen, um, Vice Chair Brittany Cummins is six. Motion fails. Do you want to comment to the, yes, do. do you have a question or regarding the vote or? I have a motion to follow up on that vote. Pardon? Should I repeat that? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I have a motion to follow up on that vote. What's your question? What's your? My comment is that if we're going to say no to this, I would like the individual to be able to address the board. And I'd like to be able to vote on that. So that this is not without a voice for this individual. Okay, do you want to make a motion yes. to bring? Yes, um, and the case number again was? 18-1490. 1-4-9-0. To bring the person before the board, okay. to address the board. Right. Is, is there or a give second? Give them the opportunity. Give, 
the person an opportunity. To address the board? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. So what does that look like when somebody comes and addresses the board? Um, is it, are we going to ask questions? So is, would this basically be another type of a hearing or what, is, what does that mean when you, we say we're going to have this person address the board? I can give you my opinion of that. Is that what you're asking, Brittany? Or are you asking that in the abstract? Well, we have a recommendation. We have a recommendation from you, PAC. Um, if they address the board, it would be done in executive in session. A, an executive session. Unless the person then, wants it to be an open uh, meeting, which which he could choose, she could choose. Well, it, at a minimum, it would be that, and then we would ask questions and then see if we want to stay with the recommendation or not. That would about about all that could happen. Can I speak to that, Chair? Does this that answer your motion. question? I don't know if there's any formal process in, in code or anything to ever appeal to the appeal to the board. So this would be outside of can, anything that we have. Can I speak to that? Yes, you can speak to it. My um, my motion is uh, would be subject to a discussion about what that could look like. I don't have in my head a very distinct process right now. I just think if we're going to overturn after a five minute discussion something that a committee has spent consider considerably more time uh, discussing and 12 professionals have discussed that, that we ought to give the individual an opportunity to present the other side of the story. That's my um, purpose in saying that and I'm, I'm open to what that process could look like. Can we invite Ben or AAGs up on this um, particular thing? There is a process that happens when we do when we f we fail to accept UPAC's recommendation, and that process. Can you speak to that to the board? So our usual process would be that we would prepare. Five Hang on, minutes. let me get this mic oh, on. I Got it. Know. Sorry, Ben Rasmussen, Director of Law and Professional Practices. Our usual process would be that we would prepare findings for the board to consider next month if the majority of the board was not going to approve the recommendation. Uh, those findings could offer a different uh, resolution to the case and offer the educator a hearing. That would normally done before you be done before UPAC uh, would be the normal process to do that and then we would prepare a hearing report and it would come back. Okay, thank you for briefing, briefing the board. We have a motion and a second. More discussion to the motion, Vice Chair. Oh, no, Board Member, no, let's see, did you have? No, I'm, I'm just still on from that. Okay, so all right. Yeah. Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. So. I don't have, I'm sorry, I'm, my finger. So if my hope is to get to that process, we would just vote this motion down and another motion would be made to we, compile you wouldn't need to make another motion we, we that's make just the motion. automatic default if this motion fails we would bring other alternatives next month okay thank you so it wouldn't require a motion this ha action would happen okay board member Lear. and i believe the rules say that the board is supposed to come up with findings of why this would not be acceptable and i would think that the board should do that instead of the executive secretary of upac so I, I'm not comfortable, again, secondly, with saying, no, we reject this, um, and we'll let someone else prepare our findings. I think the findings for rejecting this are supposed to come from the board. Okay. Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. Sorry, I just have one follow-up question. Is there any legal implications from us listening to only one side of the story at a hearing? Because we would just be inviting the educator and not the student. I'm just wondering if we, as a board, are only hearing from one side what the okay michelle the will you come student, the student is not the one who's will you come up to the mic and okay. um. <coughs> aag buse is coming forward and turning her mic on thank you the student is not the one who is bringing the action against them it's it's you pack it's, it's the board so yes there would be in you would receive information um, from the investigation, um, but it's UPAC, the, it's you as a board 
looking at the behavior of that teacher. So it's not student versus teacher, victim versus um, complainant versus respondent. That's not the way it works. May I, may I add something to that, Chair? Yes. So, and I think that's why the general process is to have UPAC do a hearing because then we have the witnesses come in, the panel, the UPAC panel hears the full, the, the full uh, litany of the evidence from from the victim, from from the educator involved, and anybody else that would have relevant evidence, and then we prepare a recommendation for the board. Uh, the current rules don't have a process to do that in front of the board. Okay, the motion before the board and the motion is to have the educator on case number 18-1490 um, invite the educator to um, come to the board, talk to the board. Um, board member Lear. Um, just one final thought on that. At least if there is a hearing, which a person cannot usually afford to have, so let me just point that out. That usually takes legal representation. So we're already putting the person at a disadvantage by requiring or allowing him the only opportunity he has is to pay a lot of money and hire an attorney um, to be on an even par with what uh, the professional practices committee has who's always represented by a, an attorney. Um, but even if that is the case, there's at least a hearing report that then the board can react to um, as opposed to an investigation and then if uh, the board doesn't agree with the hearing report, if the person wants to have a hearing, that at least gives the, the, um, the board more information and then we can decide. I would again make the motion to hear from the individual if the hearing report is rejected. So I think that this is an imbalanced system that needs to change very soon. Okay. Um, I would just point out this educator is represented by counsel through the Utah Education Association. Okay. Um, board member uh, Scott Nelson. Uh, just to speak to uh, somewhat against that, I, I don't, I feel like the board by doing that would set or possibly set a very dangerous precedent in bringing educators in on, indivi on an individual basis. I understand due process, but he's not going to jail Nobody's, you know, being prosecuted for anything. I understand, Carol, what you're saying. I'm just saying I disagree because I feel like it sets a very dangerous precedent for the board to take individual cases on a one-by-one -one basis, where someone could say, "Well, my case wasn't. I never had a chance." And I, I don't, I don't really feel like that. That would be uh, not only. I think it's improper, and I think it's um, somewhat bending the law. Board, board, board member Cindy uh, Davis. I guess my question is, what has this board's precedence been in the past when, when the body um, d chooses not to agree? You can make another motion. Can you, Linda's saying you can make another motion, suggesting a different course of action? Yes. Yeah, that's what's that's what's happened in the past. Is there could be? Yeah, that's what's what happened. We haven't had. All that I've been here, we've never had an ed educator come before us. But, but the process is banned. If it doesn't go, then it goes back to ban, and you pack, and then it comes back. Um, uh, AAG views. Perhaps, <coughs> perhaps as Ben suggested, he could bring back more information for you that reflects the information that you pack considered in a more detailed version so that you could see why they made the decision that they made so that your decision that you change things is based on something factual rather than your gut feeling. That you need to make decisions similar to how UPAC did, that it needs to be made based on what factual information they looked at. Okay, there's... Well, that's what, that's what was gonna happen, but... So you would, you want to withdraw your? Well, if that's what the, if that's what the alternative is, yes. Not if Ben prepares findings which don't reflect the board's. Well, we're on record of what to, what the next expectation is. It was given. I, I suggested that that Ben bring back a summary of what the what the considerations that UPAC found that justified their decision. Uh, and 
I, I, I don't want to argue with Michelle. I think you already have that because you okay. have the board report, which spells out the evidence that UPAC had before it. Uh, and I, I, unless there's specific questions that the board needs answers to, I don't know that I'd be able to provide a lot more information unless we actually held a hearing beyond what's been provided. Okay. Board Member Lair. What about hearing the recording of the UPAC discussion of this case? UPEC's meetings are in executive sessions, yeah, not recorded. Which is still recorded, is it not? No, it's not. Well, what about there? Are there any minutes of this? It just it just shows what the recommendation was. Because there was a, and I don't, I wasn't, I don't recall if I was oh, there no, for this discussion. Okay. But it would have been a half an hour, forty minute discussion, for which the board just spent five minutes. So there's got to be a lot more information that was processed than what the board had or chose to process. Like I say, I, unless there are specific questions that the board doesn't think are answered by the board report that's been presented, I don't know what I would bring back to the board as far as additional evidence is concerned. Board member uh, Scott Hansen. Yeah, I'm just looking at the rule R277-211-6. Um, and it appears that we can request, uh, give the um, the disciplined person a opportunity for hearing, but it appears that that hearing is before UPAC. I don't see anything here that says that that hearing would be before the board. Um, I would, you know, given that it says we can also ask for additional information or that we can um, take an alternative or recommend an alternative action, I would um, 